Well, Leah, it seems America's struggling labor unions are getting set to take advantage of President Obama's executive action on immigration. You know, labor leaders are reportedly launching a new recruiting push, possibly offering work permits to some of those four million immigrants who had entered our country illegally who until now are reluctant to join out of fear or retaliation. So is the president's executive order a big Christmas gift to his union supporters? Ryan York, chief Washington correspondent for the Washington Examiner, joins us and a Fox News contributor. Byron, always great to see you. Good morning, Eric. Good morning. Do, do these soon-to-be, I guess, uh, legals offer a big recruiting pool for American labor? Well, they do. Uh, you know, unions have traditionally been kind of ambivalent about immigration. On the one hand, uh, admitting large numbers of unskilled immigrants would have a downward pressure on wages, especially at the lower end. On the other hand, they're potential members and, most importantly, potential dues payers. Now, President Obama's action, I think, is all positive for them because it applies to immigrants who are already here and, uh, in many cases, already working. So what this means is uh, the unions would get the benefit in two ways. If uh, uh, newly legalized immigrants would uh, uh, join unions, of course, they'd be paying dues. And even though they can't vote, they're not citizens, they can provide some of the muscle, the political muscles that unions uh, flex in uh, during campaigns. They could knock on doors, uh, work in phone banks, uh, do all sorts of things that unions do in every election cycle. Do you think the president, in fact, did part of this on purpose for this? Well, I think this is one of the benefits that the, that the president has always known uh, would happen. Uh, the Democrats worked very hard to get the unions on board for the Gang of Eight uh, comprehensive reform bill because remember back in 2007 when immigration reform died on Capitol Hill, the unions pretty much killed it. Uh, this time in 2013, they did get them on board uh, in part by promising all sorts of uh, wages and, and concessions, uh, especially for agricultural workers. Uh, but that has not become law. As we know, the House Republicans have, have declined to pass that. So the president, I think, was looking for a way uh, to strengthen union support because you have to remember unions uh, uh, in, the pub in the private sector have been just going downhill for decades and decades. Uh, at the moment, 6.7 percent of the private sector workforce is unionized, an all-time low. Yeah, we've seen an incredible decline in that, and there's an all-time high, I think, 35 percent or so of government workers, public unions. But you, you raise a good point. What changed? Cesar Chavez, a uh, great union uh, hero. I mean, he was savagely and avidly, avidly anti-illegal immigrant because that threatened jobs of, of his members of the farm workers. What happened? Right. Well, uh, what, what has happened is uh, you saw that as recently as 2007, not very long ago. Uh, if you look at the Gang of Eight bill, it, uh, it makes all sorts of provisions uh, for wages for workers. The Gang of Eight bill is in such detail that it actually sets the hourly wages of fruit sorters in the Southwest uh, for 2016. I mean, it's something that the unions worked very hard with the with mostly Democrats who who drafted that bill uh, to to get those unions on board because they realized that such a bill would not have passed the Senate, much less the House, if unions had not been on board. So it seems that what unions are pl are using their political muscle and influence to actually enshrine labor contract specifics through the Congress of the United States. Absolutely. If it, if it had become law, uh, it would have done uh, just that. But since it has not become law, this is a way, the president's unilateral action on immigration, to actually get some of the benefits that Democrats hope to achieve through comprehensive immigration reform. It, it reaps some of those political benefits uh, for Democrats. Remember, the unions that are working hardest for, for what you just uh, talked about, that is, signing up members who would be uh, affected by the president's unilateral immigration action, those unions are, are unions like the, uh, the Service Employees International Union, and uh, the United Food and Commercial Workers uh, Union. These are unions who have a lot of low-skilled members uh, who want more members, and the president's action will help them get there. And, and clearly, uh, how will this affect them politically, voting Democratic over Republican? Well, the, the, there's, I think there's two ways about it. One, it, it has an immediate effect, because even though the immigrants uh, affected uh, are not uh, formally legal 
Uh, they're not on a path to citizenship, and they cannot vote right now. They do help the unions at election time in terms of all the volunteer activities like phone banks and door knocking that unions do. And the second thing is, I, I think that uh, the unions uh, believe that these immigrants will ultimately be on a path to citizenship, and I think that they uh, hope that they will ultimately vote Democrat. So there's a benefit now. And there's a long-term benefit. All right, Brian York, uh, fascinating. We'll see how this all shakes out in the new year. Good to see you. Thank, Thank you, you, Eric. Absolutely.